emo as a genre was often written off and mocked through the course of its mainstream stay, with many acts like My Chemical Romance sheltering the distaste for the style. However, over the years many emo acts have enjoyed cult followings and respect amongst music enthusiasts. Today we're going to look over some of the albums that have been heralded as some of the best in the genre. Here are the top 10 emo albums of all time. Before we begin, I'd like to set a few rules. Number one, the album has to be at least 10 years old, meaning that no emo revival or 2010 albums will be on this list. Number two, only one album per artist. Number three, the album has to be primarily emo, so pop punk leaning bands like My Chemical Romance, Fall Out Boy, Brand New, Dashboard Confessional, and Paramore, as well as screamo bands like Thursday and The Used will not be included on this list. Now, let's get started. Braid's third album, Frame and Canvas, has often been cited by critics as one of the most seminal releases of emo's second wave. The dual vocal power of Chris Broach and Bob Dana, as well as technically complex arrangements, make Braid's Frame and Canvas one of emo's most important albums. The greatness of Minerals, The Power of Failing comes from its subtle experimentation, where the band uses sounds like dissonant chords and guitar feedback to create atmosphere and emotion. The way Mineral was able to create such an emotionally potent yet powerful record is something that should be recognized by alternative and indie rock fans alike. The staying power of American football's self-titled debut comes from its uniqueness. While bands like My Chemical Romance and Fall Out Boy stuck to traditional pop song structures, American football drew from sounds such as jazz and post-rock to craft their sound. Combined with Mike Kinsella's emotional lyricism, it's no wonder why American football is considered one of the greatest of the genre. Captain Jazz's only studio album makes this list due to the band's ability to geniusly combine a post-hardcore aesthetic with intricate guitar work and time signatures uncommon in punk music. While you can't find the album pretty much anywhere, the band has released an anthology including the album, as well as other songs that are worth checking out. Texas is the reason was able to capture something brilliant with their only studio album, Do You Know Who You Are? With references ranging from the death of John Lennon to the assassination of John F. Kennedy, the album is as mysterious as its influences. The band's combination of dual guitar power and emotional vocals and lyricism make Texas is the Reason's debut one of the most important releases in emo music. The Get Up Kids' second album is anything but a sophomore slump. The band's fusion of punk rock aesthetics, melodic keyboard lines, and emotional lyrics makes Something to Write Home About one of the most important releases of the emo scene, as well as underground 90s punk as a whole. The initial reception for Dear You was not kind, with much of Jawbreaker's underground credibility going out the window after signing to Nirvana and Weezer's record label, Dave and & Geffen Company as well as working with Rob Cavallo, the producer behind Green Day's Diamond Certified Dookie. However, despite initial backlash from fans, Dear You has proven to be some of Jawbreaker's best material, as well as some of the best music to come out of the second wave of emo. Jawbreaker's fourth and final studio album is a must listen for any fans of 90s alternative and punk rock. Now, I know I said at the beginning of this video that there would be no pop punk albums, which is why I'm excluding Jimmy Eat World's Bleed American. However, that doesn't mean their other albums are excluded as well. While I know most critics would cite Clarity as the better Jimmy Eat World album, I just personally feel Static Prevail is the better emo album. The band hits all the boxes here. Guitar triads, emotional lyrics, quiet loud dynamics, punk aesthetics, it's all here. While I know the band's later releases are held in higher regard, I still believe the band's sophomore effort is still worth checking out. You knew this one would be on the list. On this album, Sunny Day Real Estate basically wrote the blueprint for what second wave emo bands should strive for. The band sets all the precedents for making good, emotional, alternative rock music. If it weren't for Diary, we wouldn't have many of the emo bands on this list. Bands like Jimmy, World, Mineral, Christy Front Drive, and so many other bands chose to work with slower dynamics because of Sunny Day Real Estate. Now you might be asking yourself, why is Diary only number two? Well, in my opinion, the only album that is better than Diary, and you can call me out for this, is... Yes, in my opinion, Weezer's Pinkerton is the best emo album of all time. I mean, can you blame me? The guitar work, the lyricism, the vocal inflection, the raw production, it's all the trademarks of a good-ass 90s emo record. And while I know it's a meme to mock Weezer, I can't help but love them and their music. It's just so good. 
All right, thank you guys for watching. If you think I missed out on any albums, be sure to let me know in the comments. Also, let me know what other topics you'd like to see me cover on the channel. All right, thanks guys. See ya.